Attack on Titan, the final season in a nutshell. I saw the final season of Attack on Titan changed everything. We go from this dark and crazy battle anime to this insane geopolitical fritter that just keeps dropping these huge bombs left and right. So make sure you don't miss a single thing and stick around to the very end. Okay, so we jump straight in after a four year time skip. Zeke is still looking just as evil as ever. Meanwhile, Ryan has dropped about 20 pounds because he can't forget how Mikasa's golf him in that last season. Oh, and he's extremely depressed. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Meanwhile, we get stuck with some new characters Falco, Rocky, Stompy, and Gabby. Gabby is actually Ryan's younger sister, so you know that she's, um, fucked up. And everybody hates Gabby. Falco, he's chill, but he's a bit of a simp. And these two, yeah, they just don't talk that much. Anyway, if you forgot the Marlins, who are basically Jeremy Stark and messed up past, are using all of the Eldians and her Titans to fight off their wars for them. They have such little respect for any of the aliens that they start using them as their own suicide squad. Anyway, Gabby's trying her best to impress her commander, so she just volunteers to go on a suicide mission. He doesn't really care if she goes or even if she dies, he's got another hundred just like her back at the camp. So she starts walking across the battlefield trying to blow up this train and save her squad. So she starts acting all lost and innocent trying to- Drake, get over DM, she's too old. Anyway, she just launches some dynamite into the air like Prime Season 2, Horse Eaton Zeke, and actually manages to blow up the damn train. And also manages to run back to her trenches in one piece and doesn't get hit by a single bullet. Why? Because plot armor runs in the family. Then it switches scenes and they just start dropping these titans out of an airship like they're on a 19 kill streak. Then Rhyna jumps out and legit has the second best transformation in the entire series. So he lands thinking he's about to mess people up and end this entire war. You're not that guy. I was flash, Rhino's actually weak as shit when the PvP fights aren't using toothpicks against him. And what is he surrounded by? That's right, cannons with anti-titan rounds. So he gets blasted, loses an arm only for the new jaw titan to pull up and save him from getting f***. Oh, then Zeke drops down, covered in CG, but it's actually not that bad. Anyway, you remember just how good he is with a horse, so he just starts eating these bombs as ships. Nearly gets taken out by some returning fire until the half-dead Rhino jumps in and takes other shots for him. Okay, so now all the bad guys are scheming about how they're going to reinvade the island again to try and steal back the founding titan from Eren. Well, little do they know what's actually going to happen. Then the camera switches to this guy that looks really familiar, like this old dude from history that's really famous for some reason. No? Forehead? Not really? No? So done, no. Anyway, Rhino legit wakes up traumatized from seeing Mikasa in his dreams again, so he turns around and get fist the cart titan. Yes, the ugliest one in the entire series. Well, it's controlled by the best girl, and you can see right here. Hada, hada. <laughs> Then you've got this random guy with long hair staring at everybody sitting down by the ocean. Like, who is he? Anyway, so we're on the train getting fucked up on the way back to their camp. Then we see Falco helping out this mystery man. Like, who is he? Meanwhile, Rhino has mad trauma from all the messed up shit that he did, so he's constantly freaking out his family. Hey, Rhino, how was your trip? Yeah, so I killed everyone, including the MC's mom. I had a crush on this girl, betrayed everyone time and time again. But I hate every last one of those monsters. I want to crush all of those bugs. Especially that potato girl. I hate that potato girl. So he's tweaking the fuck out and freaking out his entire family. So then we go back to Falco for just that little bit. And it turns out the mystery man was actually Aaron. Yes, I know, shocking stuff. And Aaron starts using Falco to send letters back to the scouts, letting them know that he's up to some activity. Falco just thinks he's a new friend because he's still an innocent little kid, so he's just doing everything, no questions about it. Yeah, he might regret that. Aye, so then we've Piek just rock Porco's oh, world. So then we get Rhino's backstory and this stuff gets really, really deep. It shows you how much of a goody two-shoes he was, how he was the weakest kid in his entire class, how his dad legit rejects him to his face even when he got his titan powers. He even has flashback and he beat the shit out of him like it's nothing. But then again, it's Annie. So with all of this now in mind, completely disregard what he did in that very first episode. And it cuts back to the present day, and you've Rhino in the room giving a rifle that Gluck Gluck 9000 ready to end all of the pain. But then Falco just bumps into the window outside and manages to cure Rhino of all of his depression. Okay, so then they introduce this guy, Willy Tiber, who is actually the real top secret leader of Marley. And that's about it. Anyway, Willy goes to make a speech begging the world to help him take down Eren Jaeger. So the whole team go to watch what he's doing. Then Falco grabs Rhino like, hey, Hey, Mr. Brown, come and meet my friend over here in the basement. Rhino looks at him like, Hey, yo, what the fuck is this kid on? So they go down to the basement and surprise, surprise, Aaron is just sat there like, Hey, remember me? It's my turn to fuck up your house. <laughs> Meanwhile, Falco is just stood there like a Skyrim NPC. Like, what are you doing, boy? Anyway, Aaron and Rhino talk about all the messed up shit that Rhino did way back then. Until he breaks down crying, begging Aaron for forgiveness. Aaron responds, Hey, man, it's all good. I'm just the same as you. I just keep moving forward until all of my enemies are destroyed. Right. 
So he transforms and blows up out of this building, landing out on top of the stage. They also play the wrong OST, but it is what it is. People start screaming and get crushed by the falling debris that was caused by Aaron. He just starts racking up the kills. Anyway, so he just picks up Mr. Tiber's crippled old body off the stage and swallows him whole. He thought he was the Warhammer Titan, but it turns out he actually isn't, so he just swallowed another man for no reason. Anyway, for crowd get wild, they all start rushing out of there. Sophia, Sophia isn't going anywhere for a long while. Rest in peace, I'll always remember the time you... And for some reason, this kid Udo thought, You know what? Maybe she's alive under that rock. Then it turns out that Willy's sister was the Warhammer Titan this whole time. She was just hiding in plain sight in a maid outfit. What the what? fuck? So she starts her Titan transformation, but Aaron just loses his patience and breaks the number one anime rule. You always let the other guy transform before you fucking throw. So he just jumps the Warhammer Titan and they start trading. Then the rest of the scouts pull up in their new stealth suits and they just start killing everyone. Even John with the worst trigger finger in history starts taking lives. Then it switches scenes and you got this mystery man in a boat just drop his hood. It's Herman! He got rid of the bowl cut so you know that he's been through some fucked up shit. Shit. In fact, everybody but Levi shows up with a new trim. And they even fix Flux fucking birds nest, wherever the fuck that shit was. So he transforms and just wipes out half of Marty's coast. And it's at this point where they realize, oh, we fucked. Yeah, it looks it. Anyway, Mikasa backflips in crying because Aaron's gone too far down that Sigma male grind set. And he just tells her to shut the fuck up and do her fucking job. Anyway, Zeke eventually shows up and he's calling Levi out for a 1v1. Yeah, because he still hasn't learned his fucking lesson. Anyway, Levi takes him out in less than a minute and blows him up just to make sure that he gets the job done this time. Now, did we see a body? No. No, we did not. Hi, so then Aaron's looking for a way to bust open this Warhammer nut. So he manages to trap the jaw titan and just pulls this man apart. What? And legit uses another titan as a nutcracker so he can get some of that Warhammer sauce. So now Aaron's overpowered as shit. Meanwhile, Gabby starts running with a rifle. So then Rhinus shows up while half transformed looking anemic like he's actually gonna be able to do something. So he gets rocked. Aaron doesn't even finish him, just leaves him in the rubble to handle that L. Anyway, so then everybody escapes on this massive airship and just starts celebrating. Connie's just so happy that Sasha and John are still alive. Yeah, about that. Falco and Gabby fish right on the back of the airship and slowly make their way up to the scouts. Gabby rolls in, hits a 360 no scope and hits... Sasha! Oh, fuck. Well, at least it's not important. Then the scouts just start jumping the fuck out of these kids and for some reason John decides to stop it. So they go to see Aaron and this is where it gets really crazy. They just walk in and see him and Hanji chilling with Zeke like it's nothing. Meanwhile Gabby and Falco just stood there in shock like they walked in on their parents clapping. They just saw this man die five minutes ago and now it's the ultimate betrayal. Aye, right, so everybody returns to the island. Armin is in his feelings, so he goes away to talk to Annie. Because there's no way that she won't listen. Shut up! They start going through the backstory of how they got all their new technology. For scientists meeting Elena. And how they somehow decided to work with Zeke like that was a good idea. Ah, Mikasa! What you doing out here with all this ass? Then there's another flashback of Aaron saying that he doesn't want to see any of his friends suffer. Yeah, about that. Yeah, you really should have seen that coming. Then it cuts back to the present day. Falco and Gabby get locked into a cell together. Meanwhile, they put Aaron into prison as if that's actually going to stop him from escaping. It's not. It really isn't. He stays there for like an episode. Anyway, Levi takes seats to the forest to keep him hidden away from everyone else. They have some wine, but Levi only drinks tea. Yeah, he's not going to regret that. Then it cuts to Sasha's funeral just to remind you how depressing all this shit really is. Damn, they're all going crazy for this wine. What's up with that? Meanwhile, Aaron's back at the prison turning more and more evil. He keeps talking to himself in the mirror, half naked at like 6% body fat with an 8 pack and those obliques. So you just know that Hanji comes running down the stairs, thirsty as fuck, trying to talk to him. And Aaron just snatches her through the prison bars and starts screaming in her face. Shut your fucking mouth, you'll do nothing. Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! You. Then it cuts to outside and you have these crowds of people protesting against how the government actually decided to put Aaron into prison. Meanwhile, Gabby starts freaking out in the cell next to him. Hopefully she dies here. And anyway, this guard rushes in like, what the fuck? And she turns around like the epitome of pure evil and just puts a brick through this man's face. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering. <laughs> Yo, chill, one was enough. Then Falco and her escape into the wild. They get into a fight by this river caused by Gabby, I mean, who else? And then they end up on a farm that is being run by Sasha's parents. But shit, Gabby's gone really quiet, all of a sudden. And then it cuts back to Marty and you've Ryan and them scheming about the best way to go to the island so that they can get fucked up again. Meanwhile, Armin and Bob cut Mikasa go to the Premier's office to try and talk him into releasing Aaron. He's like, fuck. No, he's way too dangerous right now. Now get off my office. I mean, picks this for some cock and ball torture in 10 minutes. Yeah, then they leave and they're now off the door for more than three seconds and the room explodes behind them and the Premier's body goes blasting off again. Then more shit starts going down. Aaron breaks out of prison. Huh. What? Yeah, you're the most powerful being in your universe locked in a 6x6 cell. What did you expect? I know, so he starts walking outside barefoot looking jacked as shit. And Flock gives him the drip. 
Now, this is where everything starts to get wild again. Falco and Gabby go to get food with Sasha's parents, but they go and tell Sasha's ex, Niccolo, the Marlene chef, to the kitchen so that Gabby can, um, tell him all about how she killed Sasha. <laughs> So he starts swinging and knocks Falco out with a bottle of wine, and some of it manages to dribble into his mouth. Kind of suspicious how wine's always being brought up in these last few episodes. Hmm. And then Nicolo brings Gabby to Sasha's father so that he can exact his revenge. But he actually doesn't because he's not a fucking monster. Which then makes Gabby realize maybe I'm the racist. Then Nicolo lets slip the Jean in the squad that all of the wine that everyone on the island's been drinking is full of sea spinal fluid. Meaning one shot from this dude and every single person turns into a titan. So Jean and everyone starts freaking the fuck out. Mikasa, Armin and Gabby go upstairs into one room and just as they leave, Flock pulls up and tells everyone that him and Aaron are taking over. And yeah, they knew about the wine this whole time. Shh. Anyway, Gabby sat down coming to terms with the fact that she's actually a racist. Then Aaron just casually walks into Mikasa's room with his hands cut open, ready to blow. Any other time she'd be happy about that fact, but not today. So he starts to turn on everyone, calling Armin weak, telling Mikasa that he never actually liked her, calling her a slave. Then Armin jumps up like the little white knight that he is and tries He's the box, Aaron. And we all know how that goes. It's not over. Come on! It's not over. Stop the fight! <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the force, Levi, Zeke starts screaming, turning anyone who drank the wine into a titan, trapping Levi in the force and giving Zeke the opportunity to escape. He thinks he's finally done it, that he's pulled off his master plan and put things into motion, that Levi is finally dead, that he can just meet Aaron and do some evil shit. Yeah, he hasn't learned his lesson yet. So Zeke thinks he's about to escape on an abnormal. Then Levi zooms in after killing his own squad. And just proceeds to make a fool out of Zeke for the third time. Chops him up and leaves him with a thunder spear lodged deep inside of him. Then it hits us with Zeke's backstory. You know, just try and make you feel sorry for a piece of shit. But the one thing about a piece of shit is that it's always a piece of shit. So it shows him playing catch with Savra. How Grisha was a real piece of shit treating his own son like a tool. Until, you know, Zeke eventually cracked and snitched on his own parents to save his own ass. Then it snaps out of the backstory and Zeke sets off the thunder spear blowing him and Levi apart. Now, for the second time, did we see any bodies? Not really. Back in the city, Flock and his squad get some kids to beat the shit out of Keith for no good reason. And also proceed to throw every single person that disagrees with them into prison. I.e. anyone that's mentally stable. Anyway, then Yelena pulls up and starts revealing Zeke's plan. To use the founding titan to sterilize everyone and just wait for the entire race of people to slowly die out over time. It's actually a really good plan, but it's also pretty fucking evil. So then, secret agent PX sneaks into the main castle, and someone manages to put a gun to Aaron's head. He's like, do you know who I am? So she drops the act and follows his orders to locate everyone that she came with. I love you! So they go to the roof, she just starts pointing down? What? And the job titan bursts up and takes off one of Aaron's legs. But that shit won't work on him. So he just transforms and stands there like a two-year-old who just shat themselves. Staring at Rhino as he flies in on an airship who just knows that he's going to get finished in less than a minute again. Ah. Hi, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then like, comment, sub, and share the fuck out of it with your friends. Anyway, that just about does it for me. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.